Nothing's new, the mediums are new. Do not have the audacity to underestimate what it takes to have enough success that a lot of people pay attention to you. Do not underestimate that. You're thrilled to, but the market is smarter than you. Awesome, and now uh, we are in Hong Kong, right? This is your first time. Yes. This is your first time in Hong Kong. Yes. How, do you, how do you like it? I, you know, it's funny, uh, D-Rock and I landed. Yeah. And we, were, we didn't even leave baggage claim. It's <laughs> 5.04 in the morning, we're in baggage claim. And I looked at him and I go, I think I'm gonna fucking love this place. <laughs> it's, been, it's been an unbelievable trip. I texted my wife and said, we're moving to Hong Kong. <laughs> I'm not moving to Hong Kong. I'm not moving to Hong Kong. But uh, I, uh, it's, uh, look, I think a, a, a lot of, I see a lot of familiar faces. There are people here who do know me. Yeah. I, I need action. Hong Kong has action, so it's interesting. Well, I guess uh, China has action too. And sure. so, because you know, on your daily Vs and in your content, you have been pushing China quite a bit. You know, you have I've been some alluding to some ambitions. You know, and the the one of the latest daily Vs, or not latest because you do it every day, but you know, you were in Cannes and you said you're gonna dominate China in three years. So tell me, like, why China? Why do you care about China right now? And what's the strategy that you're uh, executing against right now? I don't know if you heard, but there's a lot of people there. <laughs> I mean, you know, one thing, you know, again, something that I think some of you have heard, I don't like talking about things that I don't know. And I don't have the audacity to think that my brand or my businesses can be successful in China until I'm very thoughtful and committed to giving that a chance. And so, you know, I'm starting to feel good about the infrastructure of the Vayner machine in a US standpoint, in a European standpoint. And, um, <clears throat> In, to be very frank, intuitively, intuitively, I just feel like it's time for Asia, uh, which is why I said yes to Rise, which is why I said yes to the event I'm doing in Singapore in October. I've never, not, al not only have I never been to Hong Kong, I've never been to Asia prior to this trip. I mean, you know, I've been to, I've been to India, I've been to Australia, depending on how you want to define things, but like, yeah. I've not been to this part of the world, and ironically, the the purity of entrepreneurship, and, I would, and maybe purity is not the right word, the rawness of the entrepreneurship in Asia is far more aligned with my rawness of entrepreneurship than the US or Europe. So I think it's gonna be very native to me. I'm excited about it. You know, I think I have a humongous advantage in being born in Soviet Russia, so I come with a lot of humility of the amount of work and listening I'm gonna have to do over the next two to three years. I, you know, I like challenging myself, yeah. you know. I feel like I'm one of the only people on earth that can literally amass billions of dollars and still be deemed a failure if I don't buy the jets, you know. <laughs> I, and so when I say shit like I'm gonna dominate China in yeah. three years, that's to motivate me, that's me playing my own game for myself. Yeah. I think I won't be doing anything close to dominating China over the next two years, even though I'm gonna put in a lot of work, and then I think I'm gonna understand and I'm gonna turn it on. And I do think in a three-year macro, five-year <laughs> macro, I'll have some success um, because I think it's intuitive and native and very aligned with my spirit. And I also think the youth, the entrepreneurial youth of China, both on patience and on their relationship with their parents are gonna get a lot of value out of my content. Awesome. Um, and actually, I just want to follow up on this because, you know, you said you don't like to talk about things that you don't understand, but like this morning we were having breakfast and you actually, or actually lunch after lunch, and you actually know a lot of things about China in terms of like where the KOL industry is and this. How do you do this? Like, do you have people in your team that are doing it for you and then you just analyze or do you actually read something or how do you... Uh, absorb this information, you know, because you're so busy running around the world and, you know, speaking, doing business. So how do you, how do you manage this? So D-Rock, right before, right when I got off a of stage right now, um, back at the conference, said to me, it's been really cool for him to watch me navigate here over the last two days. He asked me, did you read anything about the market? Yeah. I said, no. He said, and I think he intuitively understood that that was going to be the answer. Listen, you know, the one thing I think, so, I think if you know who I am, I took, you know, if I say to you the word hustle, that seems very natural. You know I care about that, I talk about that. If I say the word to you smart, 
that feels foreign because I never speak about it. I rarely, if ever, talk about how smart I am. I mean that. And the reason I don't talk about it is because I don't think that that brings you any value. You know, I think making you realize that work ethic is a variable that is far more controllable than almost anything else that is a direct indicator on your success is a valuable conversation. I think me telling you that the answer to your question is that I absorb information so quickly and synthesize it through a filter that is so intuitive that I'm successful at marketing and communications is cool for me, for myself, and I'm happy about it, but not something I speak to. I think, you know, I think I, I understand human beings, period, end of story, and I understand and I respect cultural differences and nuances, but no matter what, communist Russia, communist China, capitalistic America, capitalistic London, we all have our cultures, but there are so many things that are tried and true human no matter where you are, and I trade on those things. And it doesn't take you long to re I had never heard the term KOL 36 hours ago. <laughs> I call it influencers. Yeah. But if you call it KOL, then I'll call it KOL. Like, I, like these are semantics. Influencer marketing is influencer marketing. I want to remind everybody here that I started a Vine agency four months after Vine came out. That every person you know in America, globally, outside of China, influencers I've touched or knew before they like blew up. Like, my contest picked Logan Paul yeah. to be the next Vine star. Like, I've been in this. I was an influencer on YouTube in 2006. I was an influencer on Twitter in 2007. These things are tried and true. I'm very good at pattern recognition. I'm very good at human psychology and I'm extremely good at humility in the early stages when you have to understand the nuances.